This is Dr. Krauss with the first advanced Python video. Uh, maybe this was a t I think this was a topic that originally I was going to put in intermediate Python, and maybe it's not super advanced, but I just wanted to show you how to use the try accept framework, and then also how to use, um, I guess it says raise, but I really mean assert and raise. Um, so try and accept is a way to handle certain errors and then not have your code kind of totally crash catastrophically, but maybe somehow um, process those errors, respond to those errors, and keep going without totally crashing. Um, and then you would use the assert and raise combination to, uh, I mean, you can use raise without assert, but you're basically saying, I'm, I'm, with assert, I'm checking a condition, and if it's not met, then we have a problem. Let's just crash and alert the user to this problem. Um, and with raise, sometimes, for example, when you're doing object-oriented programming, I think I mentioned this in an earlier video, you want to have some kind of base class, but you have some methods that you want to in insist that derived classes implement, but you're not doing it in the base class. And so you would just, in that, raise the not implemented error. So there's a good tutorial on tutorials point. I'm not going to actually say a ton beyond what's there on using assertions. Um, and then I stole my assertion example from um, this uh, discussion board on Stack Overflow. So you can have a look at both of those things. And my code, is this is the advanced Python GitHub link. And specifically, so there's going to be a bunch of those, I mean, at least five or six. And so I'm talking about this folder where we're going to talk about this example, this example, and that example in that order. Um, yeah, so let's do that now. So this is a really simple try. Well, this isn't even try. This is without try. So if I'm just going to get input from the user and I say enter something, and I'm expecting them to give me a number, but sometimes users don't do what they're told. And in this case, we're actually not telling them specifically to get a number. If I then try to add that together, what will happen with this code? So if I just make this a little bigger a minute, sorry, run try accept part one, it asks me to enter something. And if I follow the instructions that I know are implied but aren't really specified, I enter a six and I get a 13. If I instead enter some kind of text, I get a value error and my code has essentially thrown this error and stopped execution. Um, it says it could not convert string to float. And maybe that's totally fine in my code. But maybe I want it to somehow handle that um, a little bit better and be able to push through that. So if I instead put in a try and accept block. So I'm going to have raw A that's just going to get the raw input from the user. And I'm going to try to convert it to a float. If there's a value error, which is the error that was coming up here, then I'm going to print a second time. You must enter a number and then ask them again. Now, this code will still fail if the second time through they're just obstinate and decide to still not put in a number. But if I were to now run part two of this, if the first time I put in a string, it would say you must enter a number, and then I could put in a 45 and it would be happy. Um, so if you can recognize that certain errors might happen, or you run your code and you see that certain errors are happening, and you want to build in a, a catch for that to work around those errors, try and accept our how you do that. Okay, let's then talk about assertions. Um, and so assertions are sort of the flip side of that. Try and accept is trying to handle errors without crashing, and assertion is kind of deliberately making your code crash when you're about to head into a situation that you know you just haven't handled. So, I don't know, there's just various, various scenarios where this can be really helpful. I've specifically assumed that a certain input will do a certain kind of thing, and I'm just going to not think about other options right now, and so if this is not satisfied, I'm just going to say, 
this isn't working. Um, and sometimes to get the user's attention, you need the code to fully crash instead of just print some kind of warning message or something. Um, so if we ask the user to enter a positive number and then we convert that number to a float, I left this, um, you must enter a number, I just added the word positive um, here. So if they entered a string, they would still be prompted a second time. Then we're asserting that A is greater than zero and if it's not, this is the message we're going to print out, and it will be um, an assertion error. So if I were to run this, if I just get on board and enter a positive number, nothing happens. If I enter a, I mean, it, it executes correctly. If I enter a string, it says, come on now, you need to give me a number, and then it works. But if I just said negative six, it would say assertion error A is not positive. So again, if there's some place in your code where you know you're not handling certain situations and you don't want to think about it right now, or your code just isn't designed to handle those things, you just say, I'm going to throw an assertion error and I'm not doing anything else. So those are two powerful tools to make your code uh, just a little bit more robust.